we're now talking about the reduction of debt. Now over the last couple of years, the government and SARS have tried hard to work on what they call a uniform debt relief section. So basically this is a section that has changed almost every single year since it's been introduced and it's no different this year. So, paragraph 12a, first of all what I want you to understand is that there are two sides to this. There's section 19 which is the income tax side. So it's basically the recoupment side. And then there is paragraph 12a which is the capital gain side. We are focusing on paragraph 12a here. The recoupment will mention briefly, but I'll focus on just on a capital gain. I'll explain to you how that works. Now basically, what this section, when this section applies, this section applies where a person used debt to finance the purchase of an asset. So I borrow money and I buy an asset. And then the creditor writes off any part of that debt. Okay, so let me explain to you with land. And this principle applies to everything. Land is just nice and simple because there's no allowances. So X Limited buys land for 1 million rands and uses a loan from the bank. Three years later, no amount has been paid and the bank writes off the loan. Now obviously guys this is a simple scenario, it's not as common and easy in the future but the principle applies. So they write off the loan. So the problem is if this X Limited sells land in year 4 for 2 million well, let's actually make it two and a half million. So what will happen then when this person sells it? So they sell it for two and a half million. So the proceeds will be two and a half million, and the base cost will be the cost of the asset, which is a million rands. So there will be a capital gain of one and a half million. But now SARS goes and says, but this isn't fair, because yes, the cost of a million rands, but they didn't have to pay it back because the amount was written off by the bank. So what paragraph 12 18 says is it says go and look at the base cost of this asset which is the million rands and this amount of the debt that you've saved that million rands whatever the amount is that must be deducted from the base cost to give you a new base cost and that new base cost is then null so in this situation null so the capital gain that you make is the full two and a half million so basically, whatever they've written off, it doesn't have to be the full amount. The bank could have said, we write off 600,000, and 600,000 would have been written off here. So basically, it reduces the cost of the asset. Okay, so this section applies to the debtor, the person who is owing the money to someone. Now, here are some important definitions in paragraph 12a that you need to understand. The first thing is you need to understand, it applies to a concession or a compromise. And what is a concession or a compromise? It's in a situation where debt is written off by the creditor or where the debt is converted into shares in the debtor company or if the debtor company sells shares and then pays using those proceeds. So remember, if you sell me the land, so you sell it to me and I owe you money and I don't want and I can't pay you, then I can say to you, here are shares of my company in, in payment. That is also a debt write-off. This is what it applies for. What is the debt benefit that you get then? The amount. Right, they tell us in the act also what this means. The first thing is they say, it is whatever the amount is that's been written off by the creditor. So in this example I just used with the bank, it's the bank, the full amount. Right, they say if the loan is written off by applying by paying a portion of it, the amount that's been written off is their value. So, for example, X Limited owes 100 Rand. The bank writes off the loan if X Limited pays 60 Rand. So they say, pay 60 Rand, then we write off the loan. So how much did they save? 100 Rand minus 60 Rand is the 40 Rand. That is the debt benefit. Then over here, 
Remember it said you can issue shares, so they say, if the creditor, so remember I said, you give me land, you sell me land and I owe you money, and now I give you shares as payment. If you did not have any shares in the company, then the value of the debt benefit is the difference between the debt written off and the market value of the shares. So if I owe you debt of a million rands, and I give you shares now worth 800,000 rands, and you've written it off, then I've scored 200,000 rands. That's the debt relief. So this, what this means, though, is if I give you shares which is worth more than a million rands, so 1.2 million rands, let's say, then there's a gain of 200,000. Then this section will not apply because I've actually paid you more than what you were owed. Okay, so this is just, again, if I give you less. The next one says, same situation, I give you shares, but you already have an interest in the company. Then they say, the difference is by how much your market value of the interest has increased. So if your market value, so that you already have shares in my company, if your market value of the shares were, uh, were 800,000 rands, to market value before, and the market value after is now 1.3 million rands, that means your value has increased by 500,000 rands. That 500,000 rands, the difference between what I owe you, a million, and what you've received, is my benefit. So again, every time the benefit I get is the amount that I did not have to pay, basically. So how do we do this then? These are the steps to follow. So guys, you get two types of assets, an allowance asset and a non-allowance asset. An allowance asset is an asset which is subject to capital allowances, like machines, factories, equipment. A non-allowance asset is one which is not subject to CDT, such as land and second-hand office buildings. Now, again, you have to understand how to calculate recoupments to really understand allowances. And at this part of the syllabus, we're not looking at that. Okay, but understand the process is the same. For both situations, that debt benefit, if the asset is still on hand, so understand now what happens. I'll just take you back to my example. Excellent buys land for a million rands and uses loans from the bank. Three years later, the, the bank writes it off. Okay, so three years later, when the bank writes it off, if I still have the land, then I will take that amount that they've written off and I will reduce the base cost of that amount, whether it's an allowance asset or not. If it's an allowance asset, your base cost is calculated as the cost less allowances that you've claimed. So let's say it's a million rands and you've claimed 300,000 rands allowances. It means it's 700,000 rands. You deduct that amount from there. If that amount is more than that, so let's say a million rands, then the 300,000 rands excess is a recoupment. That's what they're talking about there. Okay, so because you constantly are decreasing the base cost of allowances. If it's not an allowance asset, that won't happen. Okay, so that's not the case. You just reduce the base cost. So if it is not an allowance asset like land and the base cost is a million, you just reduce the base cost with whatever has been written off. Okay, but now it might be, if I take you to this example, X limited buys land for a million, three years later the amount is written off. So three years later. What if in year two I sold the rand already for two and a half million rands? Then I can't reduce the base cost because the asset has already been sold. So what happens then? They basically say, no, what you need to do is you need to recalculate the capital gain or the capital loss, take, taking into account what the base cost would have been if you had already received that debt benefit. So you recalculate it. And the difference between then what you have paid as a capital gain and what you should have paid, that is what you get taxed on in this year. So basically they just say, re-perform the calculation. And this is a very recent change to the Act to do it. So remember, again, what does paragraph 12a say? Paragraph 12a says, take the base cost of your asset. Right? And say, less... The debt relief. So whatever you scored. That's what they want you to do. And that is still applicable. The difference is, 
if this asset has already been sold, then you don't have a base cost. Then they say, okay, go back to when you did sell it and perform this calculation first. So reduce the and get a new base cost. Then re-perform what the capital gain should have been and fix it now. And then paragraph 12a, 6 tells us when there will be no application of this section. Please just read through it. It's when there's an A or legate T that read it, or if it's subject to the nation's tax, or if it's a fringe benefit. Right, those situations will all get taxed under different sections. That's why they will be excluded. If they belong to the same group of companies, and the debt is a dormant company which didn't trade at all and it's written off. So this is common between companies. If there's more than one company in the group, so here's X limited, and it has a dormant company Y limited. Y limited is now dormant. X limited gave it some money some time ago. Now they're closing down Y limited and they're writing off their debt. Right. They don't want, SARS doesn't want to tax that situation. They know it's part of that process. So that's why it is excluded.